Before we can solve this question, we need to establish a couple of important angles. Let's begin with F1, and if you look at the diagram, you can see that F1 is directed along the positive x-axis. So of course, this means that the angle for F1 would actually simply be zero degrees because we're always measuring our angles relative to the positive x-axis. Next, we would like to look at the acceleration vector. Now, the acceleration vector has this angle theta that's marked, but what we need is the angle, again, measured from the positive x-axis. We need this angle right here. We're just going to call that theta prime. Now, of course, the angle from the positive x-axis all the way around to the negative y-axis, so this angle right here, is 270 degrees. So to get theta prime, what we would have to do is take the 270 degrees and subtract the angle that's marked theta, and that angle is 30 degrees. So we can see that the angle, again, measured from the positive x-axis for the acceleration vector is 240 degrees. Now, another important angle and another important concept to understand is that the net force will have the same angle as the acceleration. And that is because the net force and the acceleration point in the same direction. So we also are going to use a 240 degree angle for the net force. So now that we've established these three angles, let's begin to summarize some of the data in the following table. In this table, we have lined up the acceleration F1, F2, and then the net force. And what we're going to do is break them into their X and Y components. Now, for the X component, what we're basically going to do is take the magnitude of each quantity and multiply it by the cosine of the respective angle. And then for the Y component, we will multiply by the sine of that same angle. So, for example, let's take a look at the acceleration. Recall that the acceleration had a magnitude of 12 meters per second squared, and then we're going to multiply that magnitude by the cosine of the angle. Remember, we found that angle earlier. That was 240 degrees. For the y component, we take the 12 meters per second squared, and we multiply by the sine of that same angle. Now, for F1, you'll recall the angle was 0, and the magnitude was 20 newtons. So for the x component, we'll have 20 newtons multiplied by the cosine of zero degrees, and the y component is 20 newtons multiplied by the sine of zero degrees. Now, for F2, we don't know that. This is the tricky part of the question. So for now, we're just gonna fill in F2 comma x to represent the x component of F2. And then for the y component, we'll do F2 comma y. And then finally for this net force, this is pretty easy because what you're going to do is you're going to add the two x components together and that's going to give you the net force in the x direction and then you're going to add the two y components together and that's going to give you the net force in the y direction. So for example, in the x direction, we're just going to add the x components. We would have 20 newtons times cosine of zero degrees plus F2 comma x. And then in the y direction or the y component, we'll have 20 newtons times the sine of zero degrees plus F2 comma Y. So those are the net forces in the X and Y direction. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, we apply Newton's second law. Remember that Newton's second law simply tells us that the net force in a particular direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in that direction. Notice I'm saying in that direction. So if we were looking at the X direction, we would take this net force as well as this acceleration, and we would plug them into Newton's second law. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and for the net force, this is the x direction, we'll have the 20 Newtons times the cosine of zero degrees plus the x component of F2, and then we're gonna set that equal to the mass, and that mass was in fact two kilograms times the acceleration in the x direction, Look in the table, the acceleration in the x direction was the 12 meters per second squared times the cosine of 240 degrees. Now we're gonna do something very similar in the y direction. We're going to go and take the net force, which was the 20 newtons times the sine of zero degrees plus F2 y component. That equals the mass of two kilograms times the acceleration in the y direction, which was 12 meters per second squared times the sine of 240 degrees. So now we have these two equations and it's relatively easy to solve for the x and y components. So we'll go back to the x direction, we'll make a little room here. Let's pick up our calculators, let's do 20 times the cosine of zero and you will just get 20 newtons. So you have 20 newtons plus the x component of force two. On the right side, if you do two times 12 times the cosine of 240, you're going to get negative 12. And then finally, oh, that would be in newtons, excuse me, and then you'll subtract 20 newtons from both sides, 
and you can see that the x component of vector 2, well I should say force 2, is negative 32 newtons. Now we go over to the y direction. We can do 20 times the sine of 0, which is actually 0, so this whole thing just goes to 0. On the right side you have 2 times 12 times the sine of 240, and look at this, you now know that the y component of F2 is negative 20.8 newtons. So, for part A, if we go back and figure out or read what it wanted us to do, it wanted unit vector notation for this net force 2. So, we would have F2 in unit vector notation is equal to negative 32 newtons, and that was the x direction, so we use i hat, and then we have the y component which was minus 20.8 newtons and because that's in the y direction we would say j hat. So this would be the correct answer to part A. In part B we want to get the magnitude of F2 and the magnitude is simply the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. It's basically an application of the Pythagorean theorem so we'll go ahead and plug in the x and y components. And indeed, because we're doing magnitude, we may wish to put this in an absolute value symbol. That is the symbol for the magnitude of a vector. And when you punch this all into your calculator, you're going to get the square root of 1456 newtons squared. And then when you square root that, you're going to get about 38.2. And this will come out in newtons. So that would be the correct answer for the magnitude of force 2. And then for the angle measured relative to the positive x-axis, we would want to sketch the components. So remember the x component was negative, so it would be pointing to the left, and it had a magnitude of 32 newtons. And then the y component also was negative, so that's going to be pointing down, and that had a magnitude of 20.8 newtons. F2 itself, the resultant force, would be the hypotenuse right here. We want this angle at first. And I say at first because ultimately, if you're going to measure that from the positive x-axis, then you're actually going to have to take that angle theta and then add on 180 degrees. Remember, it's 180 degrees to get to there, but then we would have to add the theta to reach the final vector F2. So we're going to find theta and then add 180 to it. We can see from this right triangle that the tangent of theta would be the side opposite of theta, which is 20.8 20 newtons, divided by the side adjacent, which is 32 newtons. And then theta would be the inverse tangent of that ratio. The newtons will cancel out, so we don't need them. And so the theta comes out to approximately 33.0 degrees, but remember, we need to add 180 to get the final answer because we want it measured from the positive x-axis. So the final theta turns out to be about 213 degrees. This is the final answer to part C. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it, but please do not feel obligated to do so. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video regardless.